guys! My name is Francesca Coviello. I'll be your host today, and on today's episode of The Journal, we feature documentary stories about how art and community come together in different ways. We also have a performance by Joy Zan as she plays one of her songs, so stay tuned, guys. And I'm Kanisha Johnson. Today we will be sharing five stories with you, all made by students in the broadcasting program at Centennial. With the COVID-19 pandemic, this season is definitely different, I'm not even going to lie to you, because we're producing all of our shows from at home. Anyways, in this show we will take you to Paint Cabin, a DIY art boutique, and later Gladstone's annual Come Up To My Room art exhibit. And we also take you to the CCFS Film Actor Demo Studio plus the Archiving Eden exhibit, which really teaches you about the importance of C's. Our featured documentary, The Living Room, is about this community creative art making space up in Oshawa. But let's not waste any more time. I have a question for you. Have you ever tried to paint a picture? Because I know I have, and the results aren't that great. But you know what? It was super fun. Which brings us to our first short documentary called The Paint Cabin. It's about this storefront, do-it-yourself paint boutique where you, yes you, can learn to be the next Andy Warhol. Well, not exactly. Hi, I'm Sajin, and on this cold, snowy night or evening, I'm off to the paint cabin where beginner painters like myself can become the great Picasso. Let's go! Before I dive into my artistry, I had Zach give me a little tour of the place and what paint cabin is all about. Uh, my name is Zach, I am an instructor here at Paint Cabin and uh, I actually got started here um, because I came here to enjoy the space myself actually. I was talking with one of the owners, Anita, and uh, we kind of hit it off and um, by the end of my painting she asked if I wanted to work here and I said yes. <laughs> so Paint Cabin came uh, from the creation of uh, Gord, uh, who is the other owner of Paint Cabin. And um, in his college years, he was fascinated with paint uh, printmaking, but um, there was nowhere for him to really kind of try it out. So he imagined a space where um, lots of different artistic mediums can be brought to the public for them to try, uh, while also having a space where people can come and hang out, and there's a bar um, where they can order drinks and coffee and uh, you know, get off their phones for a little bit and uh, kind of be in the moment and have a good experience with their friends and family. Hi, Sajin. Welcome to Paint Cabin. Uh, so uh, we have over here is our painting area. We have 15 easels in the front over here. Um, painters will come in, we will sit you down and then we'll go through the whole process. Um, the painters will look through our booklets of inspiration here. Um, we have a whole bunch of different images to paint and uh, they'll pick one and then we can help you through the process basically. So uh, what's really great is that not everybody is doing the same image. There's other painting places um, where everybody does the same image but here you get to choose your own individual image and uh, we help you through it. So you know if for whatever reason you're not finding something in here you can look on Google Images and we can help you out with that as well. Now it's time for me to paint. I was told to tape around an empty canvas and just paint random colors around it. Of course I can do it. It's my first time going at it, but I think I'm doing pretty well. So my masterpiece is finally finished. It's a personal success for a beginner like me. Wow, that was pretty good. 
Hey Fran, what do we have coming up next? I'd really like to keep this momentum going up until the end. Well, Kanisha, we've still got lots to go with a couple of great documentaries on community art centers, even with a look at the famous Come Up To My Room art exhibit. So let's take a look at another really cool doc. Whether you're a budding painter or actor, or need a place to practice your chops, Casting Central Film Studio provides actors with the opportunity to make demo wheels. Let's take a look. Bomander and the team at Casting Central Film Studio have helped many actors change the way they think about their career in the industry. With Ideal Reels, actors can stop thinking about it and just do it. Beer. Anything on tap. Hi, I'm Louis Bomender. I'm the artistic director of uh, Casting Central Film Studio, owner of Casting Central and LB Acting Studio. Take two. Ideal Reels is an attempt uh, to give uh, actors uh, an opportunity to put together a quality tape uh, so it's competitive with actors who already have footage from actual TV shows and films. And instead of it being a class tape, what we do is can match anything that they would have uh, on an actual set of footage from a TV show or a film. So we pick different uh, sets locations and we've done bars, restaurants, uh, we did horror. Uh, then we have uh, put an open call out there to people that they can submit and they can submit their own scripts uh, or uh, give us a prompt and we'll write one for them. Inspiration was I had a lot of actors who were bemoaning the fact they didn't have quality tape, they wanted to write their own short films, but they didn't know where to do it, how to do it, didn't think they could afford to do it. And I thought, you know what, maybe there is a way for us to do it. And uh, so I set the studio up and uh, it seems we can do it. Looks every bit as good as anything you could shoot in a studio uh, or on a film set. It is a film set. Music is a universal language. This artist loves connecting people to specific feelings in her songs. Playing Guam, Joy Zand. You can move on, move on, move away. You can go on now, but you cannot stay. There you hear to the wind. Put thoughts to your prayer. Allow these memories to. You'd rain so 
Okay guys, so our next story is all about the Gladstone Hotel. Since 2004, the Gladstone Hotel annually puts on the Come Up To My Room art exhibit. This exhibit has artists mounting very site-specific installations all across the historic hotel for people to look at, to enjoy, to discover. So our very own Arthur Kravtsov decided to take a look at this for himself. Hello everyone and welcome to the Gladstone Hotel. This is one of Toronto's oldest hotels to still be running today. But that's not why we're here. This week they're holding one of their annual art exhibits come up to my room. This event looks to transform the entire hotel into an immersive art exhibit that combines interior design with art. I got a chance to meet the director of the exhibit to see what's the thought process to create an event such as this. Come Up To My Room is a signature exhibition of the Gladstone Hotel and 2020 is the 17th year of this exhibition. It was founded by Christina Zeidler, who is our founder and creative director, and Pamela Mataru. And at that time, they noticed that art and design were kept apart. They came out of the art school system and they really felt like those two disciplines were encouraged not to collaborate and not to talk to each other. So they wanted to create an exhibition that really merged and integrated art and design and allowed them to exist in the same space. And that's what we've been doing for 17 years. Uh, this is our first year participating in Come Up To My Room, our third year as a collective showing our work in Design Geo. Yeah, so we, we designed our show uh, around the color orange and, uh, you know, kind of grabbed all the orange objects we had. So we were using, you know, orange uh, push brooms and high visibility uh, earplugs um, and bubble wrap extension cords and trying to design uh, a show around so all those uh, oddly orange bits and pieces that we all find. Uh, yeah, in Conjure Room, it's, uh, it's an immersive experience, uh, you know, creative environments that kind of overwhelm the senses. Wow, what an amazing experience. This event comes around every year and is definitely something you should come check out. This has been Come Up To My Room, I've been Arthur, and I'll see you around. Welcome back everybody. There you have it. The Gladstone Hotel is wickedly awesome. I recommend you go check it out. Actually, you should go check out that whole strip on Queen Street West because it's got some really cool art galleries, some really cool event venues. Don't go yet, of course. Wait until this quarantine's over because I'll be right there with you.
I, I got involved with this because uh, I think it's important that people connect with nature. And one of the easiest ways is they actually grow something. And uh, that's how they start caring. And so my workshop aims at uh, getting people to see seeds, care about seeds, and start growing them. I'm a part of this exhibit, Archiving Eden, which talks about the importance of seeds. I hold little workshops teaching people how to start uh, plants from seeds. So I have native plant seeds that I stratify, so I already have them sprouting, and all that people do is take them home and grow them into a native plant for their own garden. And uh, once you grow a plant from seed, I guess you, you really care about it. The workshop talks about the benefits of planting within your conditions, so what does it mean when you don't have to water plants, that they grow in this environment, so lowering the environmental footprint of gardening and things that actually help bees and pollinators and butterflies and wildlife. And again, no pesticides or fertilizers. If you would like to be part of Saeed's workshop, it will be offered three times a month. It's on two Saturdays and always the last Sunday of the month. For more information, please check out mocha.ca slash programs. It sure is great when art can engage directly with the community and allow you to participate. How great is that? And I know we're all kind of in a funk right now with galleries being closed and art centers being closed, but as soon as this is over, we're all going to be able to enjoy those things again together. Art plays such an important role and provides an outlet for real community building. Our last and feature story is all about that. The Living Room Community Art Studio in Oshawa says their goal is to, quote, provide opportunities for people to connect with one another and discover creative, constructive ways of addressing the barriers that they face encouraging collaboration and development of happier, healthier communities. Here is the Living Room. The Living Room Community Art Studio. Welcome to the Living Room, a special kind of place that welcomes all, no matter what, religion, creed, or race. It uses art to help us find our beauty from within, to help us heal, to grow, to share. Respect is what we win. It's why we need a place like this, where happiness abounds, where people meet and simply find the joy of gathering round. Aww. The Living Room is an open art studio, free for people to create art. Located in Oshawa, the Ontario Charity Organization supports artists of all kinds to express themselves through whatever form of art that inspires them. The studio promotes a positive environment where people can connect, strengthen, and build their relationships with those within their community. Mary Croner is the studio founder and executive director. Let's hear more about the space from her. Welcome to the living room. We are a part of something called the Art Hive Movement. So we believe in creating safe spaces where people can make and share art for free. We believe that everyone is an artist. It's not just about Eurocentric ideas of what fine art is or who artists are allowed to be or artists should be. What makes you an artist is your unique story. That's why everyone's creative voice matters, because everyone's story is unique. But the great thing about creativity and being an artist and owning your artist self is that you can always tell a new story. So just because the story of your life or your way of moving through the world has been one way up to this point, you can change that story, you can tell a new one. And I think a lot of the times it begins with challenging that inner critic and talking back to it and telling it that it's not the boss of you. There are many different types of people who drop in, like Will Eastwood. This is an awesome space, integral to Oshawa. I'm a status Mohawk. I'm an indigenous advocate as it is, and my art often reflects that. This here, 
window, since I was asked to do it, is more symbolic than artistic. Because art, I would take more time to do more neat detail and stuff like that. But this is more symbolism that I want the city to see. But the medicine wheel is ubiquitous. It's the four directions, north, east, which when you're outside it would be east, and west and south. But it's also uh, winter, spring, summer, fall. It's also uh, baby, youth, adulthood, and elderly. Um, many, many things. There are also students who are part of the staff volunteers, like Felicia. So as a student here, we're actually encouraged to like make our own art and like figure out what expressing ourselves through art looks like just so like we are actually part of the process and we're also encouraging other people to do their own art and I find that like I didn't think of myself as an artistic person before this but since I've been here I've been experimenting more with things that I haven't really played with before and finding more of a artistic version of myself so like experimenting with like acrylics or just like oil pastels just getting that down on paper it's fun for me i think art is anything that is made with the intention of making art so it could be something as simple as i don't know like painting like some artistic lines on a piece of paper I and mean, if there's intention behind it and meaning behind it then that's that's art to me so it can take any form I would recommend that anybody come out and just check it out, experience the vibe for yourself, and maybe if, even if you don't think that you're an artistic person, come out and see what you can create because we have all types of art materials to work with here. One of our catchphrases is, don't throw it away, bring it to the living room. <laughs> as long as it's safe and clean, chances are one of our community members can use it in art. The exhibit we have today that's opening by Aaron Duggan is a great example of that. An artist who takes bits and pieces of broken things, leftover things, and he transforms them into really cool sculptures and works of art. Uh, you never know what someone will find inspiration in. Before you know it, they create something really extraordinary with it. For me, when artists like you take time to create and share your work with others and make your voice heard, and when people come together like this to witness someone's work, to acknowledge that voice, that's a really beautiful and precious thing. So without further ado, if I may, I would like to reveal the exhibit, okay? Does someone want to help me get with the other side here? So introducing Aaron Duggan's exhibit, Manic Phase, an exploration of social stigmatization. The living room came about because, well, a number of different things. As I've always been a creative person, I love being an artist. Art has always been kind of healing and helpful for me. I just found, you know, there was no reason for it not to happen. So I collected a group of people who wanted to support me. We created a nonprofit. Um, and we just started doing it. We said yes to every invitation and we'd go and do pop-up art hives everywhere. Uh, we'd just show up at events sometimes and set up art materials and invite people to come make art with us for free. And bit by bit, piece by piece, it came together. And yeah, here we are. I don't often have times to thank people who come on out and actually make this space the way it is because it could just be me sitting here on my own, right? Um, but I guess if I had to take an opportunity to say anything, it would just be to thank the people who come out and the people who work with us to help make this happen because it's not always easy. and. Yeah, there's a lot of happiness that happens here, but people also take time to uh, share the darkness, too. And through sharing that darkness, it helps everyone. Um, and the success, too. Like people, I'm just so grateful that people feel comfortable enough to bring themselves here wholly and authentically. Um, I just want to say thank you. And thank, thanks. thanks to everyone for bringing their creative self here in such a wonderful way.
Well guys, that's all for this episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. We hope you had a good time. With social distancing in place, we're all learning how to cope together, and in the end, we're going to come out stronger. So, Kanisha, what are your plans when this mess ends? Fran, I just can't wait to see everybody back at school again, take walks and feel the fresh breeze, just the little stuff. But anyways, for our viewers, make sure to check out all the other journal episodes on this channel. Once again, guys, thanks for watching. I've been your host, Francesca Coviello. And I'm Kanisha Johnson. Make sure to stay safe and stay inside. See you guys next time. Into space that your eyes dance around what fear does it bring you take you by surprise something so friendly how could you